Hey everybody, it's Matt Shu from Upright Health, and in today's video we're going to be talking about special tests for FAI, otherwise known as hip impingement. So if you have heard of femoroacetabular impingement, you've probably heard that there are a bunch of tests that go along with that diagnosis, including MRIs, x-rays, and then these special tests, which are physical movement tests that doctors will use to determine supposedly whether or not your problems are coming from inside your hip joint. So we've made a lot of videos to cover x-rays, MRIs, and a lot of the underlying research behind uh, FAI and arthritis and all that stuff. If you're interested in that, you should de definitely check out the FAI uh, playlist. Uh, we have a whole bunch of videos that covers all that information and also even a research playlist. Today we're going to be looking at special tests because a lot of times people have commented and said, well these special tests, these physical tests, help us determine with great certainty whether or not pain is coming from inside the hip joint. We can use these tests to help us take a whole bunch of information and have certainty about what's going on. And what I've argued is in fact because of the nature of all of the all of these tests and their inaccuracies, you actually end up with less certainty and only the appearance of a valid um, conclusion. So uh, in today's video, we're going to be talking about a study that actually looked at this exact topic. They looked at a bunch of different uh, special tests that are supposed to determine whether or not somebody has a hip joint pathology that is causing their pain. The results are pretty much exactly as um, you would expect if you look at all the individual tests and see what their actual statistical reliability is. So before we get started, we need to talk about two topics. We need to talk about sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity is the idea of how good a test is at catching true positives. So for example, if we have a metal detector and we have a hundred people walk through that metal detector and all a hundred people have metal, some sort of metal on them and the metal detector goes off a hundred times, that means its sensitivity was perfect. It got a hundred percent, ten out of ten, hundred out of hundred. Okay, really high sensitivity. Now if for Example, we run those people through again and, and 10 of them don't have, um, don't have metal in their pockets and they go through and it goes off for all 100, it caught all of the true positives. It caught, if there were 90 people going through and it caught all 90, it was perfect. Its sensitivity was still at 100%. Now you're probably wondering, well that doesn't sound like a great test because it got 10 false positives, right? So, good catch. Now we need to talk about the idea of specificity. So specificity basically is an idea about a test in terms of how good it is at catching true negatives. So um, basically, if we run a hundred people through and none of them have any metal and the metal detector doesn't go off, that metal detector has got a great specificity in that case. But if we flip this situation around a little bit, we send 90 people through with nothing and 10 people go through with metal in their pockets and it basically says negative, 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 negative across all 100, then it still has a specificity of 100%. It caught all the true negatives, but it also gave us a couple false negatives. So that would change its accuracy rating, right? Its sensitivity and specificity are not um, ind indications of perfect accuracy. It's basically telling you how good it is at catching either the negatives or the positives. So when we're looking at a test, we need to know what's the sensitivity and what's the specificity. If it has a really high sensitivity, it's really good at catching our um, whatever thing we're searching for. So in this case, it would be intraarticular pathology. Okay. If it has a high specificity, it's also really good at making sure we don't end up with false positives. If we don't have a good specificity rating, if we have a really high sensitivity and a really low specificity, it means we get tons of false positives. So in the example of the uh, metal detector, if we run 100 people through and only 
two of them actually have metal in their pockets and it catches all two, then it's 100% sensitivity. That's great. Now the problem is, what if it caught all 100, right? What if it gave us a positive uh, signal, an alert on all 100 people and we had 98 false positives? Well, that would not be a great screening tool, right? Because it had a really high sensitivity, but its specificity was really, really low, okay? So it basically caught none of the negatives. It had a 0% specificity. 100% sensitivity, 0% specificity is not a good test. Okay, so now that we have that covered, let's talk about some of these special tests. So this is all coming out of uh, a paper titled The Diagnostic Validity of Hip Provocation Maneuvers to Detect Intraarticular Hip Pathology, and it came out in 2010. And what they did was they looked at a number of really popular, very common um, special tests for the hip. They looked at Faber, which is flexion, abduction, uh, external rotation. They looked at a test called the Stinchfield Maneuver. They, looked at the scour test, they looked at uh, internal rotation with overpressure, uh, and they looked to see what they could find in terms of sensitivity and specificity on each one of these tests, okay? So, again, if we have a high sensitivity and we want the test to be useful, we need to also have a high specificity, otherwise we end up with a really high false positive rate, which means we feel like we're catching everything, but we're doing it at the expense of catching a lot of the wrong stuff, okay? So now, let's look at the scores for these different tests. So for Faber, uh, the sensitivity was at 82%, which means it wasn't even actually great at catching everything. The specificity was at 25%, which actually means it has worse odds than a coin flip at catching true negatives. So that's a problem, right? If you did a coin toss, you had a better chance of getting uh, true negatives than on this test. Stinchfield, uh, that one had a sensitivity of 59%, which was not particularly good. That's uh, slightly better than a coin toss on t in terms of sensitivity. Its specificity was higher though at 32%, which is still worse than a coin toss. The scour test, sensitivity at 50%, uh, sensitivity at 29%. So that one's only in terms of getting us true positives is it close to 50%. Um, and then on true negatives, it's again worse than a coin toss. So internal rotation with overpressure, that one had a 91% sensitivity in this study. And in terms of its sensitivity, it had a 0.18 uh, or 18% uh, rating in terms of specificity, which means it's really, really bad at catching true negatives. So what you're looking at is four very common hip tests, special tests that are supposed to discover whether or not your problem is coming from inside your hip. In this study, it shows that the sensitivities are all over the place and the specificities are so low that they're worse than even a random guessing yes or no they're actually geared to give you a very high false positive rate. So if you were to combine all these things, you need to ask yourself, well, what's the, what's the result? If you combine all of these tests that have, you know, 50% and above sensitivity, some of these with higher sensitivities than others, and really low specificities, does that actually give you more certainty that somebody's pain is coming from inside the hip joint? So in this study, they actually looked at that. They looked to see what happens when you combine these things. Does this give us a better read on the situation? So they combined um, a couple tests. I'm just gonna share two combinations with you. Um, first, they combined uh, Faber and then Stinchfield, and that gave them a sensitivity of 0.96, okay? Uh, and the specificity then went all the way down to 11%, okay? So 96% sensitivity and then 11% on the specificity. So it got really, really low. Then uh, they combined, they did another combination with three uh, different uh, tests that you can look up if you'd like. 
the final thing that they calculated was when they combined all four of the tests. They, com they combined uh, Faber, they combined Stinchfield, the scour test, internal rotation overpressure, and what they found was the sensitivity was at 100%. Everybody who was a positive was caught. So 100% sensitivity. Now, guess what the specificity is? If you're taking all these tests that have specificities from 25%, oh, sorry, the lowest was 18%, uh, and then the highest was 32%, you take all these tests that have very low specificities and high sensitivities, when you combine them all together, what you get is a specificity for the combined testing of zero. That means that as you took these tests that have a high bias towards giving you a positive, you effectively created a situation where you can no longer get a negative result. That means that if you put anybody through this battery of tests, you end up with a positive test and you say this person has intraarticular hip pathology when in fact you're actually missing the true negatives and you're just giving a whole big round of false positives. So this is a really great study to check out. Um, we will have a link uh, to it in the uh, description section. So be sure to go down and check that out. When you take tests that have high sensitivity and very low specificity, you end up increasing the odds of getting a positive response because the, sp the specificity is so low. If the sensitivity is high, you're going, you're very likely to end up with positive responses, right? That's, that's what we're seeing in this study. The sensitive tests are likely to say yes, 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 but if they don't have a corresponding specificity that can give you true negatives, then those tests are not actually useful for ruling in a problem. They're actually bad at that and actually make you think there's a problem when there isn't really a problem. So I encourage you to check this out. If you are a medical professional, it's definitely worth your while um, to read this article and see exactly what they're talking about. If you're somebody who's been dealing with hip issues and you're looking for a non-surgical, non-invasive solution to deal with your hip pain, definitely check out the FAI Fix. That's a program that we've designed to help people learn how to move their hips better, deal with muscles, rather than obsessing about the intraarticular pathologies. We believe people can make a huge difference, and we've seen this um, with our, our FAI Fix users. Um, we believe people can make a huge difference to the, how comfortable their hips feel. I've made a huge difference to how comfortable my hips feel. My partner on the project, Shane, has done the same, and now he's doing all kinds of crazy things with his hips. We really encourage people to stop thinking so much on about you know the intraarticular pathologies, the labral tears, the arthritis, whatever that is. Think about the things you can control. Think about muscle control and learning how to get muscles to move the joint better, and you can make a really, really positive impact on your quality of life. So I definitely encourage you to check that out. And I hope you remember that pain sucks, life shouldn't. If you liked the video, don't forget to like, share, and comment. And don't forget to subscribe.